Cheryl's been a council staff member with Parks and Reserves and she's also done two terms as a councillor for the Denby Ward. Her background's in conservation, horticulture, garden centre management, waste minimisation and community development. And after her second council term, she and Mike went overseas and lived La Dolce Vita in Italy, but coming back to Whangarei was always the plan. Please welcome Cheryl Mai. Aha, we need to get st uh, start getting out and talking to each other as a community, get to know each other, which is why I love my scooter. It's quick and healthy, and Whangarei is a town where this actually works. And see, I'm not the only oldie who rides a scooter, but uh, where's his helmet? Hmm. Imagine, this is my office. Thanks for that other photo before. Um, I'm going to move my, the office downstairs, and it will be a symbolic um, of the positive culture change that I will encourage within the organisation, where our community will be respected and their voices heard. We need to be looking after what we already have. Our community has shown that it's prepared to muck in, and we need to take advantage of that enthusiasm and find more effective ways of getting things done. It's not always about money. We can then use what we have for some innovative and fun stuff. It doesn't have to be about big name events, because smaller community-based things can make our town a more attractive place to live, invest in, and have fun in. Frocks on bikes. I reckon I'm the woman on the left with the blue cardi on. <laughs> our heritage is very important. The railway line has been a part of our history for a very long time, and rail must play a significant role in our future. Check out the Morningside Hill in the uh, background of that photo. Our city has uh, certainly come a long way since those days. Council also has a vital role in ensuring that the Auckland rail line is upgraded and the Marsden link is built. The planning is in place, demand is evident and will grow, so we do need to loudly beat that drum in Wellington to make sure we're heard and get the investment for our future. We need to put the screws on the debt cap. Maybe we could do eight or nine one million dollar projects instead of one ten million dollar project. We still get things done for the community, but we're saving. All projects need to have a strong business case and stand up to a robust, transparent debate of their value. If each of our local businesses employed one more person, our unemployment stats would drop dramatically. The second fibre optic cable is coming to New Zealand, right here in Whangarei. This offers huge sustainable opportunities in the creative sector and for all business. Here's an idea. We could support our CBD retailers by having free parking on one day a week. Maybe, thank God it's Monday, or hump day Wednesday, or free day Friday, and our parking wardens could give out bouquets, not tickets. <laughs> My vision is for the front page of the Northern Advocate to have so many jobs advertised that the rest of the nation see us as a place, the place to come to work. We can do a much better job of promoting our district internationally if we have a strong sense of what kind of development we're after. It's also up to us to build a place where young people are engaged and where they feel they belong. A mayor can't do this alone, but what a good council can do is make the connections between different sectors to champion their interest. We want a district where life for kids is so choice they choose life. Forum North was once the buzzing home to Northland Youth Theatre, dance and music, kapahaka, community events. Perhaps it's time to hand this place back to the community to become the heart of culture and music again. I believe we need to celebrate our successful local business leaders, sports people, authors, eco-warriors, musicians, filmmakers, artists, the list is endless. Maybe we could begin a local legends loop walkway. Now, how about this next shot for an international iconic piece of architecture? That's Maya in Paris. Controversial before it was built? You betcha. Would Paris like it gone? Doubt it. 
Whangarei could have an iconic piece of architecture too. Wait for it. The Hihiawa Cultural Center has been planned for many years. It will be a place of learning for young Māori and a place for cultural exchange and exhibitions. Young artists will be inspired and perhaps influenced by the quality of Māori art exhibited in a building in the heart of our town basin. You guessed it, the H word. Our community is so divided over this issue. I'm no longer sure whether it's the project or the process that is really the problem. We need to talk. We need a robust business case. We, no project will work unless there is genuine consensus. We could have it all here. Look, look what Wellington did. Wellington adopted the absolutely, positively Wellington. We need to start working for the kind of town we've all been waiting for with a positive attitude like Wellington. Whangarei Love It Here has started that process. My vision is that the Harbour Health has been restored and we can pick pippies at Portland. Those are the genuine environmental and cultural experiences that people travel thousands of miles to enjoy. So not only kids, but big kids, she speaks slowly, jumping off the Pātawa Bridge. But in my vision, they'll also be able to jump off the Town Basin Bridge into clean, clear water. Whangarei deserves to be on the map for all the right reasons. You're my co-pilots. I'm happy to take the wheel or the scooter bars. And we'll be heading toward a district that is economically thriving, environmentally healthy, and all our cultures and people are celebrated. It's all about you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Cheryl. And um, if, you, if you're enjoying the, the format and, the, of you, and you've got something that you're passionate about that you'd like to share with the community, um, talk to Matt over there and he'll sign you up for the next Pachakacha at the Old Library where we get a very diverse range of speakers there. Um, next up we have Samu, known to many as Samu. That's what it says, it's, it's what it says here. Samu is husband, father of three, and oppa to three grandchildren. I padded his bio out a bit because it was a bit too short for my liking. He's lived here for 33 years. He's been a teacher, police officer, business owner, district councillor, school governor, rugby coach, and marriage celebrant. Please welcome Samu. I'm from the Togolo Islands. I'm 49 years old. I left home when I was 10, 1973, and lived in a hostel up here at Caruth House. I love my fishing. And the next slide will tell you why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because of the work I do in our communities. It causes me to stand here and, and apply for the job of mayor, to make a difference in people's lives, our communities, to accelerate the positive changes that I see that I'm making. Only the mayor's role can make that happen as quickly as I'd like it to. My CV. As already heard, I've been in the police, a teacher, counsellor, community worker, youth mentor, and the list goes on. But in the past two years, I've actually been an advisor for the School Board of Trustees on governance and management matters. I think that's transferable skills to the job. And this is my platform, my family. I do the things I do because of them. I like to be a role model to my children. I like to be a beacon for the years to come for them to do the right thing in our community. Debt. Debt didn't happen by accident. It was a considered, deliberately, deliberately discussed conversation by councillors and they thought it was okay. There's something about the culture that in that council that thinks that having a debt is something to strive for. I have a different view. I think that it's not okay to have a debt. I think we should have a different expectation about the way that we spend our public money. And it comes down to the type of culture that you want to cultivate within that organisation. There are elephants in the room. 
there is a perception that there is only a few people that control the council and that the Whangarei economy is being hindered by uh, my, uh, minority interests. To get ahead, we actually need to talk about those things so that we can move as a community. If we are to nurture the um, economy, we need to be, uh, we need to collaborate, cooperate, and encourage small businesses to be at the table, not just the big businesses. Man, it's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> I was sitting there having a laugh with everybody else. <laughs> right, a community well-being. It takes everybody. You cannot address one thing and expect the rest of the uh, community to follow. So it needs to be a balance between the social and economic development within our community, and everybody needs to take part in it. Now, our community, I think, has come of age. They're saying, we want to be part of the process. The model that's being applied right now doesn't work. Top down. And we want to be at the top, actually. And we want to be included. We want to be a, uh, part of the conversation, not at, as an end result. And the youth comes up all the time. Socrates in uh, 400 BC said, our children are rude, bad manners, despise authority. They have their feet on the table. They don't stand anymore when older people come into the room. Nothing's changed. <laughs> the problem is our intervention and our interactions with them doesn't change either. We all know that it takes a, a village to raise uh, our young people, but only a few of us come to the table when we talk about the solutions. And that's the problem. We work in isolations to solve some of the problems in our communities. I like to be part of that, and that's why I'm standing here, because of the issues that I see, and council should be taking a leadership role. The vision. I'm scared to actually impose my vision upon you. Speakers before me have said their visions. That scares me. At the same breath, they talk about community input. So our vision here has already been decided. There's one in our long-term plan, in our annual plan, that actually says about uh, developing the ultimate living uh, environment in Whangarei. And if we are successful, my family's happy. Same as yours. Happy families equal happy communities, healthy environment, and a thriving economy. My kids will be engaged in their learning. They'll be going to school, staying. Mum and dads will be working, contributing to the economy. That's what my uh, measure of success would be. What does the council do? Apart from um, providing infrastructure, they're supposed to work in an open, uh, transparent, and accountable way. And I think that's why a lot of you guys are taking an interest in this election this year. I want to provide opportunities for Māori to participate. It's always been there for Māori to participate, but councils have uh, chosen to ignore that clause where uh, council can, um, Māori can actually have the opportunity to have input into the things that impact upon them. And then we need to change our, it's all about expectations. I expect my children to strive to be the best they can. And it applies to our communities. Have the greatest expectation of our council to provide a service that is the best. Have the great expectation that, that we will have no debt. Have the expectation that we'll be consulted, we'll be listened to. And then the intelligent vote. Intelligent voting is not about voting because you know the person. Intelligent voting is not voting for somebody that's got the most protest out or because they sponsor your rugby team. Intelligent voting is not voting because of the colour of the skin. Intelligent voting is actually voting for somebody that has the school base to do the job. I promise. I promise to uh, work in the best interest of our community. I promise to um, work full time as mayor. And I promise to be always, always be available to our community. Now, I'm not going to move the office. I'll be out in the community. <clears throat> the future is up to you. I'm not going to paint the picture for you. It is totally, totally up to you. But here's an expectation for you. Expect your new mayor to be brown, 49 years old, from the Togolau Islands. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Samu. I think it's great about tonight is we get to see the candidates as more than just a face on a billboard, and I didn't know what the intelligent vote meant until Samu just explained it, so thanks very much. I cycle past your billboard every morning on my way to school. Okay, next up we have Crichton Christie. Three more presenters tonight. 
and Crichton's the third last. Born and bred in Whangarei, Crichton's been active in many parts of the community. On the sports field, he's been a member of a life member of Northland Hockey, and it was instrumental in the renovation and restoration of the, of the hockey centre. In the field of business, he's got a surveying and engineering background and has owned and operated a share milking dairy farm in Titoki. He currently runs a family-owned rental business, rental vehicle business with his partner, Matilda. Please welcome Crichton Christie. Local government is about people. It's not about all the sceneries you've seen. It's not about all that we all know about that. It's about people. It's about their aspirations and their hopes and where they want to get in their aspirations, where they reach their ultimate goal. It's always about people. So my slides are always about people. You need a vision. You need a clear vision. And as a mayor, you need that leadership to show that vision. You need that experience. You need that, uh, oops. You need that experience. You need the leadership. And you need fresh thinking. You need to take the council outside the chamber and into the people. You need to take it to their community, even if it is on a run. Even if it is into their community, on their school hall, into their halls. We need to get away from the council chamber so that we are closer to the people. We need a cultural change. We need to provide facilities for all types of people. We need to provide not only sport, but culture and leisure in every form for young and old, so that they can all enjoy themselves. With that, we also need to provide facilities of a high standard so that we all can reach our goals, so that Kawati Wakeford can go off and sing, so that black sticks can reach their goals and we buy eight black sticks from New Zealand. So we all have those goals that we can go. Council can help to provide those facilities with the help of those people who want to get there. But the most important also is our environment. So it's the underwritten thing. Always our environment is history. So it's under, always clean water and clean sewage. Oh, I can't have clean sewage. <laughs> so there's no sewage. <laughs> so that people can enjoy the environment around there. Fishing is one of our biggest enjo enjoyment. It is the single biggest recreation thing in, in Wangarei. We have to have those clean. We have to have those facilities for it. We haven't provided many boat ramps for them. So it is important. So it is, everything is always related to people. When you're young, you need a strategy to see you can get to the end. He's got a strategy. He's going to be a digger driver. We need to make sure that they get, when he gets to the age that we have those facilities, we have things well planned, that, that there is a roading network, we have water supply, all those things available so he can enjoy it. We have... School, school kids and young, we must make sure that they are listened to and also involved. They need to have hope. They need to be able to figure out at the end of the school year they can go and have a job, a well-paying job. When they go to university and they can come back to Wangarei again with a well-paying job. We need to make sure that there's jobs out there and this is the key area that we need to work for. People are happy when they have jobs. This council needs to be more proactive in making sure jobs are available. IT jobs, well-paying jobs. We need to make sure there's a track to Wellington so that promote this area as an economic zone so that we can have those jobs come here. Because it's important for all things. If you don't have a job, you don't have the money, you have the social problems. We need to encourage these people with young enterprise people to start their businesses with less red tape so that they can get out there and do their thing without being bogged down on that red tape that we provide. Make it the service that we can do, that we can get things done. We make sure that the infrastructure is clear so that, the, that those jobs can come. The roading network, the water network, all those things we need to make sure are done. That's what's so provide people's jobs. It is about people. Everything. Council can't operate without the people. Look at this lady. She wants to go home with knowing that she's had a good day's work 
She knows, she wants to know that she's going to have food on the table. She can have the kids happy and send them to functions that they can participate in. That's the issue. One of the key areas in the area is tourism, and it's always going to be a major function for us. Tourism is, is we've got such wonderful attractions up here. So everything is that we should be encouraging tourism coming, and there's some any aptitudes with the, there is those ships can come. But the other thing is um, volunteers. It is the lifeblood of our country. Council must make sure that volunteers are well supported and encouraged to do it. They do an absolutely fantastic job. In my view, the country would probably fall over if we didn't have the volunteers. When we get to the older people, they have to be also treated for. They must have parks and walks. They must make sure their rates are affordable because they're on a fixed income. Shelley will know these people. <laughs> So we, <laughs> in the end, it's about these young guys. What they're concerned about is are we going to book all, book, all, book all their debt up to us, up to them? We must make sure when they get old, we don't land them with all our debt. This young fellow is screaming at us, don't you book it up to us. We have, <laughs> these people's got empty plates. They don't want all, those playing, all our debts lying on their plates. Make sure that our debt is well controlled because there's always things to do for these people when they get older to do, and we don't want to have their potential. So, so in the end, take every opportunity. Look at every idea. Never say no for a start. Potentially, this was Kelly Talton. Was going to be looked at in Thornall, but went away. Take every opportunity and look at it seriously. And as the sign says, in Kelly Tarleton, vote for me. <laughs> <laughs>